that co there also comes a huge um, boom in support. And I think um, while you know customer service is something we often think of as like the back end, I think it should be so forward thinking. And so um, that's why I'm here today to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about um, how to really optimize your support. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Oh, it says host disabled attendee screen sharing. One second, it does this to me every time. You are ready, you're good to go. So I'm gonna be talking to you guys today about conversational commerce and what that means is really turning those one-on-one -on -one interactions that you're having with your customers um, into a profit center. So really driving those into conversions and how to do that. Um, so conversational commerce. So um, as we kind of get into that, I really want you to think about turning your support team into more of a sales team and thinking about, you know, when you're trying to acquire all these different customers, the best way to actually do it is actually engage with those customer support emails and treat them um, with that personalization and that utmost um, attention because they could also be repeat customers. They could be driving more conversions just from um, one good experience. So that's something to really think about. And I think we can all agree that we've experienced a similar kind of um, experience once or twice where you've had bad customer support, good customer support. It's as simple as going to a restaurant and you have bad service. It can co completely change your entire experience. So definitely something to keep in mind. So I already introduced myself, so I'll kind of skip this slide, but here's my email if you do um, want to connect and reach out. Um, I do come from like a D2C background, so I worked with a lot of smaller brands last year. Um, I almost onboarded 200 plus brands on a, a partner or on a startup I was working on. And so I definitely have a lot of understanding of how um, it's like to be a small D2C um, brand as well as like building an own, my own marketplace. So just kind of going back to COVID at the beginning of March, you know, we saw an initial drop of 33% in sales. But then after that, we kind of saw a huge spike, almost 2x to 3x um, in sales. And with that, you know, while the um, tickets were increasing by channel, that actually meant your support team was staying the same. So, you know, managing that support is really important. And, and we found kind of a bottleneck between the active users as well and the tickets created by channel. So the amount of users actually weren't able to manage all the customer support tickets. And that's a lot of foregone revenue or potential um, leads that you kind of could have been interacting with right there and then. And so we'll kind of go into that a little bit and talk about how some brands have kind of shifted their mindset and how they manage um, the customers that are kind of being targeted by their ads. So these are all great examples of what I like to use from a brand perspective to kind of discuss COVID and, and um, go into how they've changed their, their language and why a lot of customer support um, or a lot of ads work into customer support. So as you can kind of see here, you know, you're really tailoring your entire story around how to message directly to the consumer and how to grab their attention. Well, if you grab their attention, you have no oversight into kind of how the purchase process is. That's where customer support can come in because a lot of these ads can actually drive into a communications channel. So Facebook Messenger, Instagram comments. Um, there's lots of ways you can kind of create that entire um, customer uh, loop so that you can control the entire process and answer any questions they have along the way. So I think one thing also to keep in mind is um, staying really current and relevant with those ads that you're running um, so that your customer support team can also have that same um, paralleled experience and customer support that they're giving so that it's not just, um, you know, uh, not you changing your messaging during this crazy time and, and being very sympathetic and empathetic during this time as well and compassionate. Um, so I like to think about Theragun. So they, you know, really changed their wording of um, ads. So it used to be all about group workouts. And as we all know, you're not able to kind of do those group fitness workouts, especially in public. Um, gyms are slowly opening in New York, so I'm excited about that. But Theragun specifically, you know, was all known about that group fitness mentality, and they really pivoted their marketing and messaging to be focused as an in, uh, at home personal masseuse, which I think is super important and a great pivot for them. Bravo Home, you see that they're um, pitching it directly about the Corona diet, so that can really pique their attention. And that also is why they saw an increase in support tickets. I think it's just so relevant to the consumer of, you know, why, what they need during this time where cooking was really big. Um, we also saw a lot of self-care. So a lot of beauty brands, you know, we're talking about taking care of your mind, body, soul, um, and you're um, doing skin routines at home. So I think we saw a lot of increase in those 
different types of ads and it already starts to build that conversation between you and your customer audience and why they're writing in. So now let's get about uh, a little bit on conversational commerce. So like I mentioned before, so helping those e-commerce brands increase their conversion rate through one-on-one -on -one real time interactions. Um, I think that goes right away with, you know, when you're running ads and you're kind of trying to gain the attention of the consumer to actually continue that conversation is really important. So, you know, once you have them in um, now, it's also about retaining them. Right. So we also um, pulled some studies and found that there was a rise of mobile messaging apps. So, you can see here 61% of consumers message businesses regularly, 69% of consumers said being able to message a business helps them feel more confident. So already there you can understand that people want to message and they want to have a conversation. I think mobile has just become so big nowadays. Email was really huge um, for so long, but I think, you know, SMS, Facebook Messenger, having, being able to do everything from your uh, fingertips make sense because it's so relevant to our generation and what's what we're kind of seeing in the market as well. So if you're not already on those kind of more conversational um, channels, definitely I encourage you to implement it, but that's not to say that email doesn't work as well. I think people are looking for more of a casual, quick, quick response tone across email, mobile, SMS. So why consumers message in? So they either want to learn about a product or service, get support or make a purchase. And you can see the different percentages respectively here. I think this is really good to note so that when you know when a customer is messaging in, maybe mitigate some of those questions that they already have with a self-serve chat or already driving them, you know, if they wanna to come to your page for a promo code, already have a promo code pop up after 10 seconds on the site. You know, when, you get, when they get to your website, there's so many different ways to actually uh, capitalize on that customer support and drive that initial conversation. So as you can see here, they're coming for a purpose and you should really have that in mind as you're kind of um, going about um, managing your customer support team. So we actually found that 28% was the conversion rate for pre-sale chats or SMSs replied to in less than 10 minutes. And what that means for pre-sale chats is it's really um, message or customers that haven't purchased within the last 30 days. So you could be a pre-existing customer, you could have never purchased from the site, but that conversion rate is, you know, so much higher than you would have just from like a specific ad or something. So 28%, you're really managing the entire customer service inter engagement. And we'll kind of show you a little bit why. So out of the pre-sale tickets, um, we did a study throughout our gorgeous platform. We serve about 4,000 customers now. And so what we did is we kind of figured out, you know, out of these tickets who weren't customers within the last 30 days, um, how many were converted. And we found almost like a 50% conversion rate. So it already shows you that really managing your customer support over um, and, and driving those one-on-one -on -one interactions when someone's coming to your page looking for someone for advice or support, having that readily available can honestly boost those conversions. Um, you can also see a revenue metric as well we built into our platform um, so driving total sales from support is also something that we can now attribute to your support team so that's where i'm kind of telling you like definitely look at them as a sales team they're the ones that are engaging with your customer every single day they're the ones that are understanding their pain points when you're running all these ads and you're not really in tune to kind of who the customer is it can really deter the customer and if you have someone that can see oh you know they're asking about this question now i know how to angle my conversation that's going to allow you to have that more personalized customer experience and I also encourage you to definitely message, you know, your competitors, see how quickly they respond. If they're responding within 10 minutes, like you should maybe think about stepping it up or just think about implementing that practice. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to be online 24 seven. There's lots of great outsourcing companies. There's also um, opportunities for you to build automation, which I'll get into in the next couple slides here to make sure that you're actually um, paying attention to all those customers and really keeping them top of mind. Um, so here you can see the first response time was two minutes and eight seconds and the resolution time was an overall 21 minutes. Obviously we all can't be two minutes and eight seconds, but this is just an example of how, you know, much how the conversion rate is way higher when you are uh, responding in that quick amount of time and why it's so important to have, especially as Black Friday, Cyber Monday is coming up, there is going to be so such an influx of support tickets. And it's really important that you're team is prepared, that you know how to manage. Um, you're also putting in automation so that you know what tickets take less priority and things that you can already pre -exist, um, use pre-existing macros to respond to. So omni-channel approach, this is something we also discuss. So Gorgeous, for those of you that don't know, is a platform that aggregates all your support in one place. So we do email, 
chat, Facebook, Instagram, SMS, phone, all in one place and help you manage that um, in, one, in one view. So we don't do your customer support for you, but we give you the software that enables you and the tools that allow you to really manage your support efficiently and effectively. So an example of having email and how to really optimize on email is post purchase email upsells. So this is an example we took from our view as well. So we integrate with lots of different app partners, Smile, Loyalty Lion. Um, as you can kind of see here, these different highlighted fields are actually variables that we are able to pull in from our view. So rather than you copying and pasting, as you can see here, customer name, number of the last order, address one, address two, it actually populates all those information pieces for you. Now, what it does here as well and, and does a really good job is, did you know we also have 230 points available? So not only have you made a new purchase, in, but you also are offering them their points to actually purchase another purchase. So it drives them back to your website. And it's really important for you to be efficient with your time there. And that's an easy fix that you can put in place for a lot of those post-purchase emails. The other thing is um, keeping it really personalized. So while a lot of people confuse being, you know, AI driven means that they're going to be a robot, it's actually just a tool that allows you to keep that efficiency, but still allows you to be personalized. So see here, the happiness department, you can modify that however you'd like and make it really personalized for your type of brand, your brand voice, um, and just making it sure that making sure that you're not losing that extra touch. Um, you know, we have built our own machine learning system so we can really identify what kind of tickets are being put through our system. Um, AI and machine learning gets thrown around a lot, but, you know, we've actually built this entire um, system around it based on the tickets that we've had in our back end to understand what the intention of the customer is, what the sentiment of the customer is. So, you know, the intents and sentiments are going to be what's the intention and the sentiment is going to be what's the tone of that message. So we can really understand and categorize how to respond and automate a lot of those responses. So here is an example of the machine learning and kind of gets me into my next point. So as you can see here, when the message, when the ticket is created, if the message intent contains shipping status. So that's one of the intents that we've built ourselves um, based, on, based on all the research and all the um, ticketing categories there are. Um, and the ticket customer integration is Shopify and is created last, less than 15 days ago, as well as the fulfillment status is in transit, then go ahead and elicit this response. So this is kind of an example of how you can use machine learning um, to automate a lot of those responses. Um, we have a lot of these integrations set up for you. We're, we're integrated with Shopify, Big Commerce, as well as um, Magento. Big Commerce has been very recent for us, but Shopify is really our sweet spot. Um, and as you can kind of see, here we can pull in these different variables again and um, we can also sign off um, with that customer agent name as well as that customer um, first name and and identify if the product is actually in, in transit now let's say they want to cancel their orders before it's in transit we would identify okay it's not in transit so we'd say hey um, we can go ahead and cancel that it. it is not not yet shipped so those are easy wins for you rather than having to toggle between multiple tabs you can just look in one view specifically and really optimize your support team there Messenger. So this is probably one of our most popular features and gets me super excited because I think it is such a circle experience. Um, you know, when you're running a Facebook ad and you're saying get 10% off your purchase, rather than driving them directly to your site, you can actually drive them into Facebook Messenger. So now what it does is it actually engages a customer support agent. So here you see this automated response. They can unlock the discount code and they actually have to go to the website. So let's say they're asking questions about, oh, I need help with this purchase. Now you've already opened up a conversation between the um, customer as well as the customer support agent. So it already feels like that really quick response um, and allows you to, to manage their entire customer flow and their customer purchasing behaviors um, as, as you have no visibility typically across all of their purchasing decision. There's a lot of abandoned carts. So this kind of can help you be that personal um, uh, shopper for them and or however you'd like to call it and keep it really personalized as well. Facebook and Instagram, we also have a Facebook and Instagram integration. Um, this allows you to manage all the comments. As we've kind of seen, um, a lot of support tickets no longer come in just via traditional email or chat. You know, a lot of people are commenting, they're tweeting. Um, we have see seen this as a very viable flow for us to manage support tickets. Sometimes there can be negative comments. Sometimes there's positive comments. For an example here, 
you see one person tagging her friend with a heart emoji um, and here's an upselling opportunity. So when, if you actually view them as leads, you can kind of identify them as customers and offer them a promo code. Not only are you activating now one customer, but you're actually activating both of them and it allows you to kind of optimize um, on, on that lead flow and, and, and goes exactly back to kind of having your co customer support team be a sales center because they're the ones dealing with it day in, day out. They can engage with these customers. You can turn that entire experience around and with, you know, the right software in place, you can also understand, hey, is, is someone, is someone in a, you know, having more of an angry tone that goes back to these sentiments. And as you can kind of see here, if the sentiment is positive, add tag social leads. So those can be your heart emojis, those really positive comments. But you can also say if it's negative, if it's menacing, maybe you wanna hide that within the gorgeous view. So you can actually go ahead and hide it. You can like those comments. Um, you can create different views so that you can prioritize those negative comments before any of the social leads to really give those the priority attention that they need rather than going one by one. So there's a lot that you can do as well um, with this type of automation as well as tagging um, specifically these types of tickets so that you know exactly when to come in on your workday and how to set yourself up for success so that you're not missing on big opportunities left and right. And SMS, this is kind of also, we've seen a huge spike in SMS. I'd say this is probably along with Facebook Messenger, a very preferred tool. Um, if you think about it, you know, mobile messaging has just become so big, as I mentioned earlier, but you're also on your phone a lot more. So the click-through rate here is actually almost 90%. So people will open it, they'll look at it in their phone, on their phone. Um, and if you just think about if someone texts you, I, I don't know if you're like me, but I hate having a lot of texts open. I have to hit, hit inbox zero, text zero, so all the time. So um, that's an example of how you can make sure that you're, you're getting in front of the customer. It also feels very personalized. You can catch their attention, as you see here, with a really beautiful imagery or GIFs, um, emojis, however you want to stay creative. Um, and then you can also ask them for a question. So it feels very personalized. You can speak in one first person. It also feels individualized. Emails often feel like such a blast, whereas text is like direct to the consumer. It's directly that one-on-one -on -one engagement. Um, and that's why it's a really important um, platform for a lot of brands to kind of uh, to, to um, definitely discover. And I encourage you to, to take, a, take a peek into it because there's a lot of upselling that's um, available for you on these types of platforms. Um, and then the last kind of piece we'll talk about is really our chat. So the chat function is awesome. Um, I think for those of you that don't have chat available, I think it's also a great recommendation. Um, you know, if they're on your page in under 10 minutes, they might have three of the same most common questions. You can create an automated response that if they ask those three questions, you know exactly how to respond to those without even having to involve a customer service agent. Um, the other thing here is you can keep it really personalized. You can welcome them to your website. You can also offer them a special time offer so you can give them X amount off in the next couple hours. You can talk about a charity that you're partnered with. Um, you can ask how did they get there today. Um, you can really make it um, as personalized as, as you want to really drive that conversion upwards, but also just make them feel welcome. Maybe they're not coming um, to your site um, for a purchase. I think a great example of this is Zappos. They, I think once um, they're so big on customer support that even if you chat to them and they don't have the kind of shoe, the customer support agent will find you that link. And because that creates such a positive experience, you know, you're probably coming back to Zappos and looking for, oh, you know, you want to give back to that customer agent who's actually helping you, even if it's not from the Zappos website. And I think that's why we can understand success so well um, and why it's so important. Um, another example is the collection and product page. So we had a customer that was having really bad issues um, or a lot of returns were happening with their um, product and they were wondering why and it was a sizing issue. So what you can do there is you can actually post a review. You can talk about ordering a size up that actually mitigates your returns and it already answers those questions before you even need to ask them, which is again, super helpful. Um, you can also do those specific discount codes if they've been on the page for a little bit longer. And then lastly, the cart page. So that's really like reentrusting their force or their trust in the person in the purchase. Um, upselling, making sure that there's a maybe a delayed final offer, free shipping, you feel like they might not close on that purchase. So making sure that they're coming back to um, really close the loop on that purchase and, un and understanding what maybe their last minute needs are to kind of push them over the line. Um, so just to kind of wrap up here, so, you know, conversion of chat is way higher. Um, if you can respond in the 
limited time. So that doesn't need, mean necessarily mean an agent needs to be online 24 seven, but that means implementing automation or some sort of response that makes it feel really personalized. And um, that also allows you to offer specific discounts and answer their questions before they get here. If you have a big support team, you can also view these different sales by agent, um, understanding maybe putting like a metric associated to them um, to really get them to, to um, uh, capitalize on that experience with the customer and give them a bit of incentive of how to really drive their purchasing decision. Um, what you can expect is a 30% efficiency gain, improvement on ROAS, and increased conversion rate with chat. Um, and just a little bit about us. So Gorgeous is the number one help desk for e-commerce. Um, you know, we are now actually at 4,000 brands. So I definitely need to update this. Um, as of this past week, we're really excited about it. These are some of our bigger partners, you know, Steve Madden, um, Anine Bang, and uh, Marine Lair. And we have a lot of customer success stories online as well. If you want to check those out, um, you'll get two months free for joining this webinar. So definitely encourage you to take advantage of that and would love to kind of touch base, understand your customer service pain points and see, you know, if, if it's not now, you know, eventually I think as you scale, it'll definitely become top of mind for you. Um, but definitely having the right systems in place before this crazy holiday season is a must. Um, and that doesn't mean that you need to be a huge, huge brand. Um, we're fully integrated with Shopify. You can see that tracking, edit orders and refund. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, it's actually two months. So um, I will <laughs> update that as well. Awesome. And I'm, thank you so much for the extra month. Uh, <laughs> yeah, got you. That's amazing. And uh, yeah, I always tell people, I talk with merchants on a regular basis uh, about customer service. It always seems to be one of those things that you, as a growing brand, you, you uh, it's a love-hate thing and you tend to neglect it. I've talked with so many people who, you know, they're like, oh, I've got this person who handles all of our orders and shipping. And then they also do customer service for half of their time. And and I always say, you know, they're, they're, they're like, we need a help desk. And some, sometimes people are too early on a help desk. I always say you get a help desk when you get your first full-time customer service person. So if they're, if they're spread between activities, the problem is, is that they can't implement the tool to its fullest because they're going to be, you know, working on shipping or logistics or packing or whatever it is that you need to do. And once you have that full-time rep representative there and maybe a few hours as a CEO or a manager or something like that, you can create those rules and macros that we saw from you. You can create a little bit of a strategy and a process behind it. And so that's what I recommend to anybody here listening that's on the earlier side. On the later side, if you're on Zendesk, it's a, it's a huge efficiency gain. I don't often say this about technology tools. Gorgeous is just one of the ones that makes sense over uh, what I would call broad industry competitors, such as Zendesk and a few of the others that ha just haven't focused in e-commerce in the right ways. So uh, definitely recommend checking them out. And as Nicole mentioned, uh, you need to get this done before Black Friday uh, and it's coming up quick. We have our Black Friday Cyber Monday event at the end of the month and then it's basically crunch time after that, right? <laughs> Yeah, seriously. No, I mean, I completely agree with everything that you just said. And, um, you know, however, we can kind of support you and, and make the right decision and inform you on like what the right decision is. I know it sounds really scary to implement something, but it really isn't. It's like a one click integration. It's not scary at all. And, um, you know, I came from a space where I worked with D2C brands. I didn't understand e-commerce and now I love it. And I'm like, wow, you can drive so much efficiency and automation with so many different apps on the Shopify um, store. And so, yeah, I, I definitely recommend you check us out. <laughs> I love it. And we did get a question. I answered it to my, the best of my knowledge. Oh, okay. I didn't about, see that. Uh, Instagram DMs. Everyone wants Instagram DMs. Let's just briefly sit, t tell everyone why they can't have them. <laughs> okay, well, so it's not an us thing. It's an Apple thing. Um, so it's- it's No, it's, it's an Instagram thing. thing. It's yeah. exactly. So Apple has not yet opened the API for allowing us to kind of integrate DMs into our workflow. Whenever they're ready to open that, you know, we'll be ready to go. Right now it's just Instagram and Facebook ads um, as well as organic comments and Facebook Messenger. So- yeah, it's our number one most asked for request. I like hate to say that we don't have it because I know how many people slide into DMs. I'm definitely one of those too. Um, so much money to be had there in all honesty. And I, I think I've said it before, but at BoxyCharm, we had three people dedicated. Uh, they were on tablets and they were dedicated to answering DMs because there's so much money 
uh, just sitting there. So there's, there's definitely value there, but right now it can't be imported because of that yeah, API limitation. They just literally don't want it happening. I think, you know, so obviously we have Facebook Messenger is a, has an API, meaning that you can use a third party tool to send and receive me Messenger uh, communications. But on Instagram, you can't do that because uh, they, they've just decided not to allow that. And the reason they've decide, decided not to allow that is kind of the reason like, Twitter, LinkedIn, and uh, Facebook all allow this functionality. And then of course, uh, marketers ruin it by like spamming thousands of messages. On the flip side yeah. of that, there is this gray hat market area where you can use a tool. What that tool does is actually spins up an instance of a, mo of a mobile app. So it's called an emulator. And it uses that emulator to grab the information and copy and paste it in. So it's not using an API and that emulator is technically against Instagram's terms of service. So tools like that are putting your account at risk. No one's actually been banned specifically for just using the tool, but Groves, the, some of those tools get just shut down in mass, but uh, like if they grow too large and, and it could be uh, come back to haunt you if you tried to use it for a nefarious activity, like sending 4,000 DMs in a day or something like that, that's when it can get you in trouble. So that's, that's like Instagram DMs in a nutshell. And, and yeah, how to there you go. I just learned something new from you too. <laughs> and, uh, so um, it's, it, it was great having you on, Nicole. And as always, um, yeah, let's, let's uh, you know, my, my, my shtick, my spiel is always having that real-time conversation right before that point of purchase, overcoming those objections. We heard from John Tucker in our last event, Global, a few weeks ago about how important it is to have conversations at checkout. If they freeze at checkout, put a little chat bubble there, and that can uh, really drive a lot of revenue. And using a tool like Gorgeous on the back end to manage those conversations, because they have to happen in real time. And that's really hard to do because you, you've only got so many reps and so many resources you can dedicate to it. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, it, it's- yeah. Everyone needs to figure it out. Uh, I'm tired, yeah, and, I'm tired and, of this not being a thing. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I and I think like, you know, I, I, there's a lot of brands that are like, oh, I'm managing everything on email. And I'm like, that's going to break. You're going to scale and you're not going to be able to manage it. And you should be able to spend time on the more important manners. They're really like revenue driving activities versus where is my order a million times? Yes, that's important, but that can be like, that's a consistent response. You know, that's a repetitive ask that you can always automate. And I think for Gorgeous Oso specifically or any other software, we actually give you chat out of the box. We give you all the integrations out of the box. We don't charge based on users. So you can have as little or as many, but every integration that can be integrated comes out of the box. So definitely do your research and check out what you need and what your needs are. But it's a simple thing as like implementing one more work stream. You're going to have a, a communication channel out of that and a new customer channel out of that. Regardless. Yeah. And, and just like anything in your business, like, so in, in the beginning as like a CEO or a founder, and I, I'm going through this myself, honestly, in my, my own business, but it's definitely different in e-commerce. You know, you're doing everything yourself and then you get to the point where you can hire somebody to offload some work. And what we really want to be doing as we build our, our businesses, our, these, these brands, these digitally native vertical brands especially, is thinking about how to compartmentalize the work that needs to be done, put somebody in that spot, and then create a process around that work that, uh, that can be as streamlined as possible. That scales the individual and it scales the business as fast as humanly possible. And so that's what I love about, like uh, there are certain tools in, in technology. Gorgeous is probably like a, the, one of the leading ones that work specifically on efficiency streamlining as a revenue generating activity, which is kind of odd because usually they are actually separate. I, I, I do a separate talk where I talk about there's two types of tools, some that impact KPIs and some that impact efficiency. And then I guess there's, I need to add a third category where you can actually do both. And so what I mean to say is if you're, if, if you're not focused on putting the process in place, if you're just too busy answering the questions, then you are going to get run into the ground. The business is going to overtake you. And you, when you get underwater, it's really, really tough to get out of it. And they talk to so many, you know, 100 fire merchants. They come into me and Derek, I have this problem, I have that problem. I, I, have, I have one founder that I talk to all the time. His business is going so well and he's so miserable. It hurts to see him like, you know, in yeah. the, he's, he's back past eight figures now and he's still like this is just killing me every day and now it's like all right how do we take one big part of this off of your plate like forever you know and it's it's tough to do and it's it's especially tough to do too late 
So I want people to be thinking about that early on. Um, and sorry for the side rant. <laughs> no, no, no. I, and I agree. And I think the last note that I'll just say is technology is always advancing. There's so many ways that you, you know, maybe, you know, couple years ago, we didn't have technology like this that allows you to kind of, you know, reduce the, lo lo the workload, but like this is supposed to help save you money in the long run, but also allow you to prioritize your time because your time is money too. And so like, if you can find easy, quick wins to, you know, offload some of that, it's just so important. And I, I definitely, like I said, it's about scaling with technology and as much as it's kind of taking over, there's still that personal element. And, um, you know, rather than having to spend like, you know, hiring 30 different support agents. You can actually maybe hire one or two, have them manage it, and then you're saving more money in the long run as well and allowing you to kind of minimize that overhead cost. Absolutely. And what, all right, my final thought on this is that it's, you, know, you, you literally, to me, it's always about putting that foundational stone in place. How many, you know, building the foundational layer of a business and then you eventually build a little bit more of a scalable layer too. And what's really interesting is that each of these components, we all want to do it. We want to streamline this. We know that it's good for us. If you actually invest too early, it's bad for you too. And if you invest too much, it's bad for you. So take these things slow figure out how to build just a small part of one building block, right? And then, and then tomorrow you can put another piece on that. And then maybe over a week or a month's period of time, boom, customer service is locked down. Now let's go to the next problem, right? And then, you know, you circle back about a year later or so, and you go, oh, looks like we now, now with this many reps, we need a manager and we have to, you know, we are solving for different problems and all that. But, but uh, it is really a delicate balance between shiny object syndrome, which I see a lot of merchants get into installing, you know, 20 tools in one day is just not practical because you cannot possibly execute on all of them at the same time. Um, but they all can benefit your business. Uh, and then of course, um, yeah. And, and then on the flip side, you know, uh, overlooking a technology until it's too late or just not being aware of it because it's so hard to keep up with you in this space. So right. 100%. Uh, yeah. Thank, yes. That, agreed, agreed, agreed. You know, it. you're the plug. He's the plug. So, and anything you need to know. <laughs> that, that's perfect. Nicole, thank you so much for your presentation. We are going to move right into our next session. I'm going to